Last night I took a walk around the homestead and I picked all of the different apples that are available right now. We're going to lay those out and taste them and see what we got. And I also checked out the new seedlings and there's a couple of pretty exciting looking apples in there. A couple of nice big good looking apples and we're going to taste one of those as well. So this is Crabby Lady, which my friend Freddie Menge grew from a seed. It's a cross between Wixen and Lady Williams. He says it's, uh, it ripens really late, like Lady Williams does, but it's uh, better. You can see that these have cracked and there's ants crawling all over them, so that's unfortunate because that means I have to pick them and they're probably not ripe yet. Now since this is a late ripening apple, it's definitely bad news if they're going to crack every year because, you know, they're supposed to ripen in January, February probably, and, you know, that's a deal killer right there if they all crack every year. But maybe it's something that they'll outgrow. We'll see in the, in the future, but anyway, I'm gonna pick these now because they're definitely not gonna get any better. Check on our seedling apples. My first impression, without tasting it even, is that it's not gonna be that great. Let me smell them. I think we can wait another couple of weeks on those probably. Okay, here's another one. This one looks quite interesting. As you can see, it's large. Now, remember that these apples are growing under fairly deplorable conditions. They don't get enough water. They haven't gotten enough food. And this still managed to grow quite large, quite a large, nice apple. And this one, I don't know, this one feels promising to me. It just, it looks good. I don't think, I, I don't think I'm really that good at judging an apple by its, you know, exterior and just kind of like feeling it, but that's my impression. This one feels like it could be closer to ripe. It definitely has some apple scent. I have no idea when to pick these. That's just how it is, you know? Now here's one that's really scabby. Yeah, we're gonna pick this one. It's damaged, it's scabby, it looks riper. Now this apple, looks interesting to me. It looks good. It looks like it would taste good. So what's happening here is that since this is so damaged by probably these are bird pecks and now there's ants in there and there's some sunburn on this side, this specimen's ripening ahead of, you know, the other one. So the other one's probably going to be a couple of weeks or more. Um, maybe just a week. I don't know. It smells fragrant. This one smells even more fragrant, so it could just be as little as a week till that other big one is ripe. Well, we're gonna taste this. What an adventure, huh? But this, my friends, is the one I'm interested in. Look at that beauty, and quite large. You know, uh, three inches in diameter or something. There's two of them, they're beautiful, they're very red. Um, in spite of being covered with these little pantyhose things to protect them from birds, they are very red. So what's really interesting about this apple is it bears some semblance to one of its parents, which is grenadine, the red-fleshed apple. And the thing about grenadine, it has these same speckles. And with grenadine, it, the red color of the flesh is actually the pigment in the red flesh showing through the translucent yellow skin. So wouldn't that be cool if that's what was going on here? However, I noticed there's some green at the stem end. I don't know if you can see in there, but there's some green in there. So, so I'm kind of inclined to think that that's probably not the case here, but it does bear some resemblance. The other cool thing is that this is um, a Lady Williams grenadine cross. Now Lady Williams is my latest apple. I talk about it all the time because it's so cool that it ripens on February 1st. So this could also be a very late apple. Now grenadine can be ripe into November, so it's fairly late to uh, maybe even December. So this could end up being a fairly late apple. And it seems like it's approaching ripeness. Let me smell it. 
Okay, so now I'm getting even more excited because it does have a scent now, uh, which it didn't last time I checked it. And it almost smells like it has the berry or fruit punch type of um, scent, which the red fleshed apples have. So I'm pretty damn excited about this one. Now, Lady Williams also has uh, a lot of red pigment in the skin. So it could just be that it has, you know, very red pigmented skin from the Lady William parent. Oh, it's so maddening not to know when to pick this stuff, but you really, it's just so hard to tell. You know, you can go by feel, but if I let them go too far, they might just turn into mealy, useless things. You know, it really does. <laughs> It really does seem to have a berry type of a scent. Oh, that's too exciting. Okay, well, I don't think I'm gonna pick either one of these yet. Well, that's about it, except for this one cracked up scabby thing here. Oh, it's definitely not ripe though. All right, well, I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, I forgot about this one. This is again gonna be Lady Williams. So the Lady Williams crosses seem to be producing early. Uh, they're precocious. That means they come into bearing early. Okay, this one's really cracked. So, so do I leave this for another week and risk it rotting from the cracks here? Because it really doesn't feel or look ripe. So I think I'm gonna leave it for at least another week. It's worth the risk. And this other specimen up here looks quite a bit better. I'm not gonna take the cover off that. We'll look at it when we pick it. Good morning, I am Stephen Edholm from SkillCult.com. Today, I have one, two, three, 15, 15, 16, 17 different varieties of apples to taste. That's pretty exciting. They're not all gonna be at their peak, but that's just how it always is. I am pretty excited about a few of these apples. This is Crabby Lady here, uh, grown by my friend Freddie Minge from Seed. This is one of my apples one of my seedling apples. It's a cross between... No, I can't remember. Anyway, that's exciting. This isn't a great specimen, but I think it's probably ripe. And the other one next to it wasn't ripe yet. So we're tasting this one ahead. It probably won't be the best apple specimen of that variety ever, but we'll see. And this I call King Wixen, also grown by Freddie Menge. It's a cross between Wixen and King David, two of my favorite apples, and I think two favorites of Freddie's as well. So I'm gonna start with the apples that I'm most excited about, which is those three, because I wanna taste those with a clean palate. And uh, especially apples can be kind of cloying because they're sweet. And if you taste a really intensely flavored apple that with a high sugar and then taste something more mild, it won't taste very good. I'm gonna start with this one. So as you can see, this is quite cracked. Um, that's bad because I can't leave it on the tree to ripen. And its, it's mother, Lady Williams, is a very late ripening apple, around February 1st. And Freddie said that this apple also ripens that late. So this is three months before it's supposed to be ripe, I think, and it probably isn't ripe. Now its other parent, it's almost like here's the two sides. This is the Lady Williams side that's perfect, and this is the Wixen side that's cracked. Wixen also suffers from cracking. Too bad. Hopefully it'll outgrow that, or it's just a matter of this particular tree growing in this particular spot, or this year. Not sure, but if it cracks, it's never gonna ripen until February because by then, hopefully it's rained a whole lot. It cuts like an unripe apple. It's not bad. It's definitely not ripe yet, but it's still pretty flavorful. Um, it's got kind of the fruity flavor of uh, Lady Williams. It doesn't really have the Wixen thing. Actually, it might a little bit. So I can't say a lot about it, but it, it seems promising. It actually tastes like if you picked it right now, uh, which maybe means you could pick it before the rains and stored it in cold storage that it could ripen up over the course of a month or more and be quite good. Very interesting. So it shows promise, too bad it, it didn't ripen, that's disappointing. Okay, next we're gonna taste King Wixen. King Wixen is a small apple. Belton said it was good. This is a slightly russeted apple. Uh, it bears some resemblance to Wixen. It looks like it's starting to get the translucent effect that Wixen gets when it's really ripe and really high in sugar. Freddie didn't seem to be super enthused about this variety. 
I had high hopes because I love both of these apples and I've actually crossed, um, thought about crossing them before. It's not sensational, but it's very good. I can taste the Wixen. I'm not sure I can taste the King David. It's tart, but it seems like it has a lot of sugar. It looks kind of neat. We'll see how this shapes up over the years. I had very few of them this year. It's a very young tree. And also as the tree matures, they could become more better. Okay, you ready? This is one of my seedling apples. One of the parents is red fleshed, but this has no red flesh. Again, fairly tart. Nothing to write home about. There's not really a lot of character there. I don't really taste much in the way of character. Yeah, I mean, it just tastes like an apple. Not, nothing to write home about. You know, it could change. It could be different in a different year. Maybe the other specimen will be different. Maybe it needs to ripen longer. But more likely, it's just a boring apple. I know I want to taste Wicks and last because it's so sweet that it'll make everything else taste like nothing. Okay, let's start with uh, this. This is Claygate Pear Maine. I think it's overripe. I kept leaving it on the tree because I knew I was going to do a video and like this, and now I think it's overdone. Well, this is a low acid apple. Um, it has quite a bit of fruit flavor, some pear flavor. It has a very dry flesh. It's not a crispy, juicy flesh at all. It's, it's got a dry texture. It would probably press really well for juice. Like if you ground this up, it wouldn't turn into applesauce. It would stay at this kind of dry pulp that squeezes out really easy, which is one of the things you need for a good cider apple. It's all right. This tree isn't growing under very good conditions. So, and uh, I believe this is the first year it's fruited. It might've fruited a little bit last year. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that one. Nothing to write home about. Okay, here's Gold Rush. Now I left all my Gold Rushes on the tree like I always do way too late. Don't leave gold rush on the tree. It does not hang well. It cracks badly after it rains. So it's more like an October harvest and then put it into storage. This is an apple that really needs to be picked and stored. My friend Thaddeus was here uh, almost a year ago last year. We were tasting apples that were hang still hanging on the tree. So I think he said that gold rush was the best apple he'd ever tasted at his friend's house and that was in March out of storage. Unfortunately, almost every apple is cracked. I, I'm not even sure I can find one apple to store. Yeah, I think they're all cracked. Too bad. Also, bugs love them. Almost all of them have bugs in them, like maybe 75%. Okay, this is labeled as ash meets kernel, but I haven't tried to confirm that. Um, I think it probably is, although it ripened late, and I think of ash meads as an early ripening apple. I mean, I've eaten it in early September. That's pretty good. Hmm. This one's a little overripe. This one's better. I'll probably finish this. I'll probably finish eating that one. I wouldn't say that this is sensationally good, but there's something about it all just kind of comes together and makes me want to keep eating it, so. This is High Cross Pippin. I believe it's a Nigel Deacon selection. We tasted this last year uh, at Christmas time. So I just picked this one because it didn't look like it was going to last much longer. It's a little bit interesting. It's uh, very high acid and it's juicy. It kind of reminds me of like a, an acidic vitamin C drink or something like that. It's got some neat fruit flavors in there. Overall, there's kind of a watery effect. I wouldn't call it rich and it's not very high in sugar. Um, I don't know, not sure. It doesn't seem that promising. Remember that uh, some of these apples may be perfectly good in other, other areas and they're just maybe not good here. Okay, this one's called Salt Coat Pippin. I don't no idea, but I'm guessing that if I collected it on purpose, it's probably a late, supposed to be a late keeping or late harvest apple. And this may be too early. Uh, first time this tree has ever produced anything, so. Low acid, dry flesh, a little bit of petroleum flavor. You know that three-in-one oil that you put on sewing machines and gun oil and all that, that kind of type of oil, multi-purpose uh, lubrication oil? It kind of tastes like that. Why? I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly the flavor. 
pretty weird. Amoroso. This is in the Wixen group that, you know, Edder was working with these crab apples, and this is one of them. As it grows here, it's not a crab apple at all. It's uh, like a smallish apple, I guess I would say. I mean, this is probably actually an average size. And I'm not sure this is totally ripe yet, but I think it probably isn't going to get too much better. Okay, so Amoroso definitely has that Wixen group flavor, and we're going to taste a couple more apples with that here, also from Edder, Albert Etter. And as I've experienced it in other years, it's not the best of the lot out of those. The best one besides Wixen, I would say, is Vixen, and as named by Green Mantle Nursery anyway. It's an intriguing apple because of that flavor. Otherwise, I would say it doesn't have a lot going for it. Um, it may be, a, you know, it may improve with ripening, but I haven't been super impressed with this apple. It just, it's almost good or almost really good, but I just never, I don't know. It just doesn't quite come together. Edward's Fine Winter. This is supposedly bred from Hall, and when I tasted Hall for the first time, it tastes very, very similar, so I think it, it, that's correct. There's just things wrong with it. Um, it doesn't store well and it turns mealy, so that's the main reason I gave up on it. When it's really good and everything comes together, it tastes like pineapple and it's very rich and it's very good, but that's just a rarity. It just doesn't happen, so I don't know. It just may not be good in this uh, climate, although its parent, Hall, uh, used to be grown in California commercially, at least to a small extent. That one's getting turned into apple butter. Okay, these two fine red apples here are called, wait, what are they called? Bedford Pippin. Uh, Bedford, where's that? That's in the East Coast, right? So I think this is an American apple, although it sounds rather English, but it's probably just one of those English-influenced West Coast names or a place in England that was, who knows? I don't know the history of this apple. Well, it tastes like um, an American red apple. Mm. Yeah, this would probably make an excellent Waldorf salad or just eat, just to eat with walnuts. In fact, I'm going to save this and eat it with walnuts later. Bedford Pippin. Uh, it's a beautiful apple. I don't know when you're supposed to harvest it. I'm guessing a little bit before now and then put it into storage. Okay, so let's do a couple of red fleshed apples now. Way too early to harvest it and it's normally, you know, something I harvest maybe in like December late November, December, something like that. Let's see, no, we were eating these off the tree uh, at Christmas in my late apples video, which you should check out. And this doesn't even show any pink. Mm. Mm. Very interesting. It's really strong honey flavor. Like maybe the most I've ever tasted in an apple. Mmm. That is delicious. Right here next to the damaged part, it's a little bit pink. Well, that's quite interesting. Um, you know, this apple just continues to impress me. I, I, I ate another unripe one the other day that I think fell off the tree or something like that. And it was just really good even though it wasn't ripe. It had this, you know, slight kind of strawberry flavor, a little bit of the honey flavor, excellent texture, uh, very juicy. I wonder almost that uh, Albert Edder didn't market this variety, but maybe he had plans, who knows. Um, it, it doesn't get very red. It never gets red all the way through. I've never seen it red all the way through, but it's just an excellent apple. Across the board, good dessert apple, aside from the pink flesh and the slight, maybe like strawberry flavor that that brings to it. So I highly recommend that people seek this out and grow it, and um, I just think it should be grown more. It's like someone infused it with honey. Delicious. One year I bought some scion wood from, what's the dude's name, in Oregon. Slapped him. Okay, uh, this I got from Nick Botner in Oregon, who is an apple collector. He had like, I don't know, a couple thousand varieties or something. But when I ordered scions from him, 
they were awful. They came, mis lots of them were mislabeled. One of them was a pear. Um, they had fire blight. Yeah, I mean, they came out in all sorts of different things. But in the group, I ordered something from him called Nor called Norcross Red Flesh. Norcross Red Flesh. And that apple turned it out to be just a big red apple that's pretty good. But this one, which was labeled something entirely different that it's definitely not, came out to be a red apple. So this is interesting. Um, I would guess that this is one of the Etter group. You can see that it's not red all the way through. It's just kind of tinged pink. Now, that is similar to Christmas pink. And it also has the same texture. It has very crunchy, light, uh, melt in your mouth, very juicy texture. And similar flavor. Um, this one I would say is not quite ripe yet. My guess is this is out of that Etter group. It has not really shaped up for me, and a lot of times it'll have spots all over it, like to the point where it just, you know, it's really hard to grow. I don't know what they are. It's some kind of, I don't know if it's a physiological problem or a disease, but the apples right next to it don't get that. So whatever it is, whatever anyone else calls it, whatever it's supposed to be called, I just have it as an unknown red-fleshed apple. I mean, some in some ways it seems promising, but yeah. Nothing. It really hasn't been anything to write home about either. Next, three more Etter apples. Um, Albert Etter was an apple breeder here in Northern California, like in the early 20th century. First half of the 20th century, I guess. So this is labeled as Catherine. Now what I have as Catherine on Frankentree over here is definitely different than this. It seems to be different than this, quite a bit different. So I'm not sure which one's the real Catherine. I've been calling that Catherine because that's what it was labeled and I didn't have any reference point um, to identify it. So let's see how this one is. Now Catherine is supposed to be named after Albert Etter's wife, Catherine Etter. Whatever I have is Catherine on, on Frankentree, I really like. I like very juicy and light and melts in your mouth type of flesh. Uh, not super heavily flavorful. Let's try a different one. Very flavorful. Now I'm going to pick out that one to try to keep. Now notice I'm tasting the red side of the apple, not the green side. That's the side that gets sun, so it should be more riper and more tastier. Very good. Both both seem a little both seem a little overripe. It's got a lot of flavor, a lot of sugar. I like those things. Uh, the texture isn't great. It seems to be going a little bit mealy. I think we're a little late to the party here. My general impression of Muscat Divinus in the past has been low acid, very high sugar, Pretty intriguing flavor, but for some reason it just isn't something I want to eat. I think it would be really good for juicing and processing probably into apple butter. I'm interested in it for that, for like utilitarian purposes. And I think that once in a while you're going to get one that's really intriguing and really good. But in general, I think of it more as a processing apple for, again, for some reason, it seems like it should be better than it really makes me think that it is. I don't know. And finally, Wixen. Okay, so these are all cracked again. You know, I should have picked them as soon as it rained or right before. And they have been hanging for a long time. I like to let them hang for a really long time because they develop more sugar. And a lot of people, I think, pick them too early. Mmm. 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 Man, so that's hands down the most interesting and compelling and most tasty apple out of this lot so far. It's, this one is really good. It's very ripe. It's so full of sugar that you can see like the flesh has become translucent. That's how I like to keep them on the tree until they start to get this translucent look to the flesh. And it's got lots of the Wixen thing, whatever that is. Okay, quick run through. Gold Rush. 
a very favorite apple of a lot of people. It stores really well. Don't let it hang on the tree like I always do. Probably worth trying for almost anyone just due to its popularity. Also has some disease resistance of some kind, although bugs seem to like it. Wixen. Everybody should grow Wixen or try it. Catherine, interesting. I'm gonna keep, keep an eye on that. Try picking it earlier and storing it. Muscat de Venus. Uh, probably great for processing. Very high sugar, I think. I um, mean, I'd like to test that sometime on a really ripe one. Not good this year. Ashmead's kernel, if that's what this really is. Um, definitely worth eating. I'm going to finish this one here for sure. Bedford Pippin, interesting. Definitely good with walnuts. Like I know already it's going to be good with walnuts. Claygate Pear Main and pretty much all these others, it's, it's kind of maybe, maybe not. I'm hoping that King Wixen will... That's not its real name. I just call it that. I don't know if Freddie has a name for it or not. I'm hoping it'll develop. This is the first year this bush has fruited, so it may improve um, if it fruits for a few more years. It's definitely worth eating, though. And my seedling, I don't know. It's probably going to be a boring apple. It's quite tart. It's quite tart. Um, and it tastes otherwise. It's just very apple-y. Uh, but it may not be ripe. And... This is the first year this tree's fruited, so it could develop. I mean, I'm definitely gonna let it fruit for two or three years before I give it the ax. But if it doesn't perform, it will get the ax. Because I'm ruthless. Okay, that's it. It has not been a good year for apples, and this is pretty much the end of the line. I don't have a lot of late apples to taste. Um, it's pretty much gonna be just my few apple seedlings, which, you know, I'm not sure how long that's gonna be, a week or two or three or four or more, I don't know. Hopefully I won't let them over ripen or pick them when they're under ripe because I only have a few. So I'll see whenever that happens or whenever else I do something else that I record and put on the internet. Interested in. Look at that beauty. Quite large. You know, uh, three inches in diameter or something. There's two of them. They're beautiful. They're very red. Um, in spite of being covered with these little pantyhose things to protect them from birds, they are very red. And here's another interesting thing. This bears some similarity to grenadine, one of its parents that has red flesh. And with grenadine, the redness has a similar appearance to 